Never remember the kind of. For those of you who are going to be watching it online, we have now started. Oh. So we we can uh, we can sum vertically. We can sum horizontally. Uh, we can also do other formulas. So if you go up to where the auto sum is, there's a drop down menu, and some of the options include average, count the numbers, what's the maximum, what's the minimum. Matter of fact, you could you could go up here and say, uh, I'm going to go down below. You know, maybe you're doing stats, and these are all, um, you know, sum, average, uh, max, min, and you're going to go up here and you're going to say, auto sum. It's going to give you that. I'm going to hit enter. But if you go to do auto average, you're going to have to reach, you're going to change it. Now you'll notice it looked above it and only found one number, which is the sum. If I want to do the average, all I have to do is use my mouse and do that. And you'll notice it filled in B10 to B13 right in the formula. And when I hit enter, there's the average for those four lines. Same thing for max and min. Select the you know cells that I want, and then min. I could just as easily for max and min have um, max. I could have selected the entire block, and you know would have done the maximum from that entire. So you have the flexibility to do all of that. Let me do this. I realize this is a little bit. Is that a little easier to see? Oh, sorry about that. So anyway, that's you know um, any of these formulas. You can go up into the formula bar up at the top and change it. So I could do sum of B10, but maybe I want to do it all the way through G13. I simply take the second number, change it, and you'll see it now blocks off that entire group. So I could do it with that drag and drop method, but I can also just go in and type the values. When I hit enter, why is it giving me all those hashtags? Too big a number for what? So for the cell. So what we can do is we just make it a little bigger. That's the most. I mean, I see that error a lot. I'll, I'll have people turning in homework that half the numbers are hashtags. You need to look at your work. If you're seeing those, reformat stuff. I could also, if I do Control Z, go back to the way it was. I could go to that cell. And maybe I don't want to change anything else. I could make the text in there, oops, smaller. And now it fits. But I just took it from a font 11 to a font 10. So I just made it a little bit smaller and it fits. Um, either way, you know, it would work. It gets a little funny looking if you've got multiple different font sizes. A third way to do that would have been to just select this, everything. And I can go to, um, I forget which one it's under. Um, cell size. Well, there's there's a, um, yeah. It's under a line up here. So uh, shrink to fit. So if I click shrink to fit, what's going to happen is if you have stuff in a cell that doesn't fit, it will automatically make the font smaller to make it fit. So if I hit this, it just automatically made that smaller. And if I make it even smaller, notice that January and that number and all of these numbers got smaller, but not the ones up here because they still fit. 
That doesn't look like it all. No, and, and so that would not be my first choice. Another possibility you have, which doesn't really work with numbers, is I can go to um, alignment and do a wrap text. I can get wrap text either because it's up here on the ribbon, but I can also open up the alignment and do wrap text here. I'm going to turn off for, sorry, turn this off. Just do wrap text. And when I hit OK, you'll see that September, November, and December all got wrapped. January and all the others still fit. They can't wrap a number. So if I do this, it's just going to go to that because it doesn't make sense to make it 153,048 and a zero on the number, you know, on the line below it. So numbers don't wrap, but text will. All right, I think that's good enough for that. Have fun, Will. <laughs> um, if we if we went down below a set of numbers and we put in the auto sum, it returns. So now we've got that auto sum. We can also just drag that across, and it auto sums for all of them. Anybody know a different way to do that? You could do it, Preston. What is it? Oh, How about if I simply copied it and pasted it? Remember, these are formulas, they're not values. So when I, if you look at the first formula, this one here, it's summing everything from B10 to B13. C10 to C13, D, E, F, and G. So when I copy a formula and move it, it's going to move everything uh, over. This is where you're going to run into problems with copying and pasting. Let's say I took this sum of B10 to B13 and I copied it and tried to paste it here. It summed 11 through 14. So it missed the top one. If I go down here and here, one more, and I'm going to get nothing at all. Why? Because this one is now summing four empty lines. This one, three empty lines, two empty lines, one empty line. So you, you just need to be careful when you copy and paste formulas. They move in relationship to where they started. So when you move them down, the numbers go down. If you move it sideways, the, the letters change. But we wanted the letters to change. So, you know, just keep that in mind as you're moving things around. All right. Um, project three had you doing um, monthly expenses. I'm not going to go in there. I'm just going to, the things that they were talking about, we've talked about a little bit. One was, you know, changing changing the uh, size of the columns so everything fits. Notice I can change one at a time so that September and November and December fit. Or I can select all of the columns I want and change them together. I might just want to keep tweaking it until everybody fits. Does that make sense? I can also do the same thing with number or, or rows, and I can make them bigger or smaller. You'll sometimes want to do this when you're trying to print out a spreadsheet for somebody to look at. And if the cells are too small, it's hard to read. And maybe you've got plenty of space on your page. Why would you, you know, why would you do this? If this is your page, if this is your page, and you're trying to show a table 
that looks like this. And the font is so small it's hard to read. You've got all of this space. Use it. And so you can read, uh, you know, change the way. And if we were in Word. Hey, Tom. Yes. Can you zoom in? Oh, sorry. Zoom. Um, yeah, I just got to find a window so I can see what I'm doing. Any better? Yeah, that's better. Okay. So all I'm saying is, if you're trying to present data, half the time you're doing this, it's to either save the data, the other half the time it's to share the data. And if you're going to try to share something, it's got to be big enough for people to read. If it was in Word, you could actually hit the format this and tell it the width of the table equals 100% of the page. And it will auto-fill it across. But if you look at it and it's like, I can't read anything, then you know, go into the column width and just stretch them out until it fits the whole page or close to it. Um, another way to do it is to turn on auto-fill, I mean auto uh, Auto size the the um, well it doesn't work that that way. I mean play with it, budget, move it. Um, in Excel, you can also when you go to hit print. So if, if I said I want to print this, I'm going to go to File, Print, and I'm going to select selection. And maybe that's not as big as that here. I'm going to go back just a minute. Let me put some some uh, grid lines in here so it's a little easier to follow what we're doing. So there's the borders. So I just want to show this. And I'm going to go back to the way it was, where everything's going smaller. Because <coughs> I'm mean. I have no idea why he's doing that. Um, yeah, let's justify it. We turn the wrap off. Okay. So if I do this and I go over, or maybe even, yeah, I'm going to do that and I'm going to go to File, Print, and one of those options is to print the selection, the whole workbook, or just the active sheet. Worksheets. And if you look at what's on the page, that's kind of small. What I, one of the options I have is down here there's a scaling option, and I can tell it to, sorry, it's being slow, um, fit it to one page as best as it can. Oh, she put the whole page. Well, I'm oh, sorry. Um, Actually, that, you know what, because it's smaller, right? I'm going to go to custom scaling, and I'm going to uh, adjust the size to 125% and see what happens. A little bigger. Change the custom scaling a little more. I think I can get it. Okay. There we go. There we go. So I now have something that looks a little bit bigger. What's another? Who can come up with another way? If I needed it even bigger, then I could do it. Landscape. Landscape. So that would be another option. Instead of trying to print it portrait, I can print it landscape. And now I can stretch it even more. Um, Keep just going and going by 200%. So now I've got something when I pass it out at a meeting or I put it on the bullet board, there it is. And it's really easy to read. Um, I think I'm done with it.
I'm just kidding. So I'm going to exit out of this. And you'll notice none of that changed what we were doing on this first page. I could just as easily have selected all of this and increased the font to maybe a 14, increase the column widths so everything fits again, um, maybe even make it a 16, maybe make these taller. And now do this and go to file print. And notice how it, it now, because I've got custom scaling, I'm going to go back to custom scaling and turn it off and just say no scaling. So by increasing the font size, increasing the width, increasing the height of the cells, I made it larger. But when I do that, it changes the actual worksheet. When I just change the scaling in the print, I leave the worksheet alone. I'm just changing how it's going to be printed. Okay. Enough said about that. Um, what else do they have us do? Merging. So I'm going to insert a row at the top. So I'm going to get rid of a few things here. Back to. So I want to put a row at the top that says something like annual expenses. And I don't know what this is called, but we're going to insert a row. And I'm going to put in annual expenses for Tom's widget factory. Now, because I have text wrap on, what it did was it wrapped it so that we could see everything. This works really good for small things. Um, if somebody over in this column writes the net worth of everyone in Spain is 13459 uh, as of you know, July 2017, but the year before uh, was worse when the uh, labor unions went on strike. I mean, I'm just making stuff up. So if that also has wrap text turned on, okay, well, why did it do it one and not the other? Oh, I just realized it's way too big. Now, let me go back here. Um, we're going to go to or the dotted order to do it. format cells, wrap text. Oh, that's just annoying. Is the dotted order next to that nope. cell that's something to do with it? No, because what that is is if we go to view and we do page break view, that's where the page break would be. Ah, gotcha. um, and so if you're in the normal view, it's just telling you. That's where we anticipate the page break will be. That's all it means. Um, you know, if you went over far enough, you, you know, if there were, or down. Tap, 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 tap. There's the next one. So that would be where the next page is, but obviously we don't need. We don't need that. Well, you know, that's a, it's a good question. Um, I am not sure 100% why that is behaving the way it just did. They've all got wrap text on. Can't you try conditional formatting? Won't that condition? Well, I mean, it's just two different things. I'm just trying to figure out why it's, why it is doing one thing in one. Unlock it. Who knows? I'll, I'll, I was trying to make a point. The point being is, if you end up with this happening in the middle of your file, you know, you're going to go row, 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 and then all of a sudden you get this row that's really tall, and you're not sure why until you scroll over and you find out that cell Z49 had a really long paragraph stuck in it. 
Um, we'll do this where we have people register for events, and they literally, when you ask them for their address, will put in an address, a comment, three phone numbers that they can be reached at, and something else. And all of a sudden, you're scrolling through the list, and you get to this row for somebody signing up for a, a workshop, and it's friggin' long. So just keep in mind that that can happen. What I wanted to show you, though, is so I'm going to make Oops, oh, it's not what I want. I guess it was. I'm going to grab and go all the way over, and I'm going to go hit merge and center, and it did that. And I'm going to put the height back to normal because it, it got stretched out because of the way it was. Now, if I have data here, more data, and I try to merge and center this, it's going to come up with an error thing that says, whoa, merging cells will only keep the upper left value and discard all others. So the more data will be lost. So when I hit OK, I've got that. I can't unmerge this and get my data back. So unmerge, that data is gone. So just keep that in mind. This back. This is a good way to make headers for a, a chart, and then you can, you know, do something fun, color it, make it bold, put a thick border around it or a thick underline, you know, and, and you can do things that make stuff look better. I know it's not an English class. Um, so it look better or not sound better. <laughs> So if we have these numbers, we have a number of a number uh, options. We have what they call accounting, which is I call currency. So if I change that, as long as it fits, we're going to get your standard dollar sign on the left, number on the right, with this you know dollars and cents already included. So that's the accounting format. We have percent. Then it's basically going to add two zeros. Because one, you know, one hundred percent is the same as one. So if I take one and turn it into a percent by going up here, it's going to say one hundred percent. If any of you have forgotten your elementary and middle school math and you have a hard time picturing percentages, how many cents are in a dollar? Hundred. That's where the percent came from and why we call them cents. There's 100 cents in one dollar. So dollars to cents is the same as percentages. So you can always switch by. What's 25% of a dollar? A quarter. 25 cents. Um, you know, so you can always do that. Now, there's also a comma style. So if you come down to a number, that um, is not a, 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 a currency. Actually, I'll do it over here. You know, thirteen thousand two hundred and fifty-nine. So I'm writing this without any commas, and that's the way it is. So the computer doesn't need a comma. It doesn't need any of the things that we need or want. And if the number gets really big, it's hard for us to really look at that. So we can use commas, oops, and make the cell even bigger. And now we know that we've got 23,489,713,259. Uh, With no pennies. If I don't want the point zero zero, I go up here to the number area, and there's a remove decimals, which will remove them, or increase decimals, which will add them in. Oops, that was too many. There we go. Um, so I'm just going to leave it at zero because we're talking about the gross national product of Brazil and. Well, okay, 23 billion would not be enough. We'd have to add a few more zeros. Um, 
it would be, you know, I've seen accountants and, and people put things like, well, yes, the total was 23,489,000 or 1,713,259 and 12 cents. And to be honest, the 12 cents is an absolutely irrelevant number. Uh, it would be like me saying, count the change in your pocket, then let's take your pocket out and determine if there's any copper or nickel adhered to the fabric in your pocket, because we're going to count that as part of your change. Does that make sense? Don't micromanage really big numbers. Well, if you're doing budgets. Um, or, you know, I suppose if the IRS was talking, you might have to put 12 cents, but it's a, it's a pointless thing. I worked in a department down in Texas one time. Our annual budget was about three and a half million dollars. And uh, we had an accountant that worked with us. Uh, well, we had two accountants. One that literally wanted to know where every single penny went. And one that said, you know, I don't know where the 12 cents is. And they're going to say, don't worry about it. Because to find those 12 cents Cost might take you 30 hours of hunting, going through spreadsheets, looking at bills. Oh, look, somebody entered this invoice 12 cents off. Okay, 30 hours of somebody's time over the course of a year is not cheap to find 12 cents. In which case, the other accountant would just go, okay, adjustment to budget, 12 cents, bing, you're all balanced. Have a nice day, which is what makes sense, but not everybody is trained that way. Uh, using the tell me feature, just, you know, that's about finding stuff. I mean, if I had, if I was right here, uh, let me pick a different one. Um, and I wanted to, you know, you'll notice I clicked on the, on the headline, and you'll notice that both Merchant Center are turned on, Wrap Text is turned on, so is Center and Bottom Alignment. Now, I could change it to Middle Alignment or Top Alignment. It doesn't really change a lot. Unless you have the text Unless, box be Right, so if the box was big, then it makes a difference. And even though it's merged, I can do right uh, or left center or right alignment. I can't. I can't really use change. You know, shouldn't have done that. Just leave it. Um, now, there are a couple of other cool things that you can do. If I wanted to highlight this whole area, I can go up to styles, do conditional. Highlight cells. That's why I hate switching between trying to do this on. All right, I'll come back to it. Oh, you said three sixty on that one. No, this is 20. Well, it, it's not that. It's the difference between, I was just teaching the other class putting uh, spreadsheets into a Word document, which it's easy to do the conditional formatting, so you have different rows because you use style. But I get, forget that they don't really have the style options in here. So what if we did alternate row, um, Color. Help on alternate row. Apply shading to alternate rows. It's going to come up and it's going to say uh, apply shading to alternate rows using conditional formatting. Which means I'd have to I'm going to grab this, control copy, close this, go to conditional formatting. Uh, new rule. Yeah, you don't need to do this today. I'm just showing you can do that. Change the format. Color. I'll leave it off. Didn't do it. Technology not working. 
Wait, I guess that's why I'm gonna have to write it. That's right. Help security right there. It'll work for a when need us. Oh, border. Oh, that's what I want to say. Little color. There you go. So this fill doesn't like that color. That fill is a little too dark, because what did it do? They completely blocked out. Well, numbers. actually, I think what I did by mistake was on the conditional formatting, I had the font color set to. Uh, oh, did you match the colors? I believe I did by mistake, yes. <laughs> so we're going to uh, edit this rule, um, format it, go back to the font. Yeah, see, that's what I did. So we have return. There you go. So you can do all sorts of things like that. Um, there's a, it, I just got sidetracked because that's what I do. Um, oh, look a squirrel. So where? Well, you'll be happy to know that the final count of flying squirrels in my house, and we haven't had another one caught in over a week, was 18. Oh, jeez. 18 freaking flying squirrels running around inside our house. Um, I looked up one day and one of them was on the wall staring down at me. They hang upside down, hang by their back feet. They're a little bit like bats. And it was just, but they got the biggest, cutest eyes and it's like, I'll get you. I'll get you, my precious. Um, sorry, that's a, you probably know that reference, but. Um, so we can, um, finding differences by in, going on to chapter um, two, just because you've already should have done chapter one, it was fairly straightforward, you should have been able to follow those directions. I know a couple of you haven't done it yet. Keep working on it. Nice thing is you'll have next week when you have nothing to do. Um, vacation. Yeah, that's right, vacation. You'll be working 40, 50 hours a week to make some money, but, um, you know, you'll have a chance to get caught up on some of this. If you need projects reopened because you, you're getting caught up, then uh, you can either see me before we leave today and I'll try to open them up or send me an email. Um, I don't often respond over the weekends just because it's my weekend. And um, I have a life. Not much of one, but I have a life. You do. Okay. Um, wow. <laughs> so it's like studentless responsibilities. I know. Hey, I, I going through graduate school. Um, I had two small children, married, uh, and I worked as a research assistant. That was twenty hours a week. I waited tables ten to fifteen hours a week. I made more money than that. Yeah, well, <laughs> it just depended on the week. I didn't really, I mean, it was a nice restaurant, but the owners were a little cheap. Um, the, uh, well, you know, if it was busy, you had a great day, right. if it was quiet, you, you know, you'd have to argue for your, you know, extra part you're supposed to get. Um, I was working for the nursing school as a tech support for their computer lab. And the good thing there was that there hardly ever anybody in it, so I did my homework. Um, at one point, I was also building electronics for another department on campus. And then I built somebody a deck. So a very short period, I had five jobs and raised two kids and go to class. So you'll never get a lot of mercy from me. <laughs> but then again, I was <coughs> foolish and, and uh, we moved down to North Carolina, not realizing that Maine had it really good, because Maine has subsidized daycare, and North Carolina does not. So when you find yourself with two preschool children in a state, and who, who would have thunk? To, you know, that was not one of the questions we asked. Well, do you have subsidized preschool for students? No, we don't. So and daycare costs a fortune. Yes. We spent ten grand one year on two student salaries which is why I was working multiple jobs, 
uh, in order to, you know, allow my wife to go there. You know, both of us had, were in college, so it's not like we can stay home. Um, okay. Um, so do I kind of life advice I need to learn in college? <laughs> exactly. Things you should know. I'm just doing one line here. I don't feel like going 34, 29, and 37, 60. Oh, no, that's going to be So what we're going to do is just looking at formulas really quickly. So this was the uh, actual uh, budget. This was the planned budget. And this was the difference. And we're just going to make these three all money. We're going to go back to home, hit accounting. So they're all money. I'm going to stretch them out just a little bit so there's a little more room. One thing you'll notice is that text automatically left aligns, money automatically right aligns. So I will often, oops, I'll do that. Um, I'm just going to take these three and either make them centered or left aligned so that they match up with what's underneath it. So how do we find the difference between these two? We just throw in a quick formula. I want D4 to equal C4 minus B4. And that's the difference between those two numbers. Let's say another company or another department being Street, I'll pick one that actually was negative. So, um, Sunset Automotive. Now, do they only work with retired people? Is that what that is? I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> so, Sunset Automotive actually made 34,000 or bought 34,192. They were planned to be 32,000. Uh, 885. Now all I have to do is I can just go up here, drag that down, and it's going to bring the formula down. And notice that it, they spent more money than they planned. Uh, we could have put in planned, we could have put the word budget. So we budgeted 32,885 to be spent on Sunset Automotive. We actually spent 34,192. Therefore, we lost $1,307 uh, on Sunset Automotive. On the other hand, we didn't spend as much on seller and corporation, so we had a, a plus you know, left over. This is very routine. I don't care whether or not you're working in an automotive shop and you're looking at clients and expenses. Um, it, you know, my uh, wife just brought in her car to our, our uh, automotive group and asked them about getting the brakes done and what needed to be done. And they left a message, and it was a Friday afternoon, and we've been there lots. And when we got the message, and it was like twice as much as we needed to spend, and brakes are something I can do easy, we drove over to pick the car up, and my wife goes, where's the car? And it's already done. And they had brought it inside, and they were half done doing it. Which for you know five or six hundred dollar repair, they're supposed to get approval. They were being nice because it was a Friday and they couldn't get a hold of us, and we usually get the work done. But they also know that we also do our own work, so they said, "All right, what can we do?" And they they sold in parts at cost, and they took the labor down to fifty percent. We would have been one of these negative figures on the end of the day because they didn't make any money on it. On the other hand. You know they, you know they did. They helped. Us. They helped us out. We helped them out. Because otherwise, they would have to take the parts off, and put the bad parts back on. Um, everybody was quasi happy. My wife wasn't thrilled with because you know even so we had to pay for the labor, um, just half the normal labor. Yeah, they just had to keep that. Yep. Um, and then, you know, what you can do here is you can also do, you know, do the sum equals sum of B4 to B6. Notice I'm just typing it in because I've done it so often. And I can copy and paste that. 
copy and paste it. And then now notice um, at the end of the year or whatever we're looking at, we're still on, on track. We have a, a positive. What you wouldn't want to see is a lot of negatives for your clients or your budgets or your expenses. And then um, you know have it come out the other end. You can change the format here. We go into number and we go into currency. Accounting usually puts negative numbers in parentheses. But if I wanted to do red, I could do red. If I wanted to do a negative sign, I can use a negative sign. And so now you see that the Sunset Corporation has a negative number in front of it. Um, any questions? That many? They did have you do some inserting formulas with functions. Oh, yeah, that's fine. And uh, which one are they using? They're using EW tests. Let me go over that one. Starts ticking the moment you the moment you open it. We've got your number. So we want uh, PW test. I got a question for you on that. Why sure. can't you just leave us log in? It's security for Yeah. Because too many people leave themselves logged in and walk away for lunch. And they do it on the computers here at campus that are public use. Right. They do it on all the computers. Um, same as mine on, on my desktop. So it's so. for security, for your security, our security. It just makes sense to not leave you know, logged in accounts all over the campus. Okay, so here we go. We're going to open it up. So, and, and this is one of those funny things. They had you using um, average, so they wanted you to. Um, Get the average of these three next to it. Sorry, enable it. Um, and you can go up to the formulas tab at the top, and you can look for. Um, if you go to insert function, you're going to get a pop up that lets you pick whichever one you want. So there's average right there. But I'm going to. Um, where else can we go? What else can we use? Recently used. The yeah, this is the same as what it was on the other one. Um, you can. Uh, and I'm not right for you. No. Oh. More function, statistical, average, right there. Um, so any of those, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so then it's um, what numbers do you want to average? Well, it selected B4 to D4 because those. It recognizes those numbers right next to the cell that you just did. If I need to change it, I change it. And I'm going to hit OK, and there's the average. Here's where it gets funky, though. I'm going to copy that and put it down next to this one. It's got two zeros in it, and the average is 31. So the question is, do you want to include it or not? Because what happens if I delete those numbers? So if they did not take the test and got a zero for it, I need to put the zero in because they didn't take the test. If I leave it blank, this going to show that they did not see. Yeah, and, and you know, hey, taking one test out of three and passing it is not what we're aiming for here. So formulas treat empty cells differently than they other ones. What else we got? I don't know if somebody's gargling that mic's on. Yeah. <laughs> we can also do an average down here. Um, recently used average. Uh, B17 sounds good. Okay. Walk into class and go, hey, this was the class average. Yeah. 
pretty much. And everybody can go poke. Yeah. And again, it's only going to measure the average of numbers that exist. So it ignores this blank one right here. And if we deleted this, the average goes Put the zero in, the average goes down. So you've got to just keep that in mind as you as you look through. If for some reason I put a zero here, it's going to lower it more. What else? What else? Um, so that was the average. We already talked about doing you know maxes and you know max again. We can recently used because I used it. So max. But now because there's something above me, I've got to go ahead and actually highlight the areas I want. And then it would be 97 was the highest, it's right there. Um, and I could also have changed this to uh, go down to D16, find the highest number of all three tests. Still 97. Any questions? How about if we count the number of tests that were taken? Now this is going to be an issue because if we do four function statistical count and we want to count all of these. It says there's 39. Which is one, two, three, four, five, 13 times three. So the number, this is really showing not the number of people that took tests and the number of tests, but the number of scores that are showing in the, that space. So if we were to say, oh, they didn't take it, or we didn't take it, and they didn't take it, now 36 tests were taken, but now we've messed up our averages. And I'm not going to get into the more advanced formulas, but you can do uh, count if, um, I'll just do it, count if, and then I've got to give it the range, so I'm going to look for B4 to B16, and then what's the criteria? And I'm going to do, get right with this, greater than zero. 36. So as you use this more and more, you'll get familiar with some of the some of the uh, formulas. And so you always have to keep your mind engaged. If you come into this assuming that Excel is going to do it right 100% of the time, because um, if you want it, if you were told count the number of, of tests that were actually taken by students, and you count those zeros. Um, then you would be uh, messed up. Uh, and how do you differentiate between a student who did not take the test and somebody who got a 0, 0, 0, 001 because they, they got their name right, you know, but nothing else? I mean, theoretically, it's possible you can have somebody come in, take a two question exam, and fail both questions and get a zero. <laughs> Yes, you know, you may have to give some thought to that. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know that noise. It's probably Tom. Um, by the way, you know, when we did the average, we could also do an average if not zero, greater than zero. Um, it's actually easier to do the count. Yep. So find the average who got like a zero, you just have to put a zero or a zero. What? No, if you want, because there's 36 that took the test, that was more than zero. Or do I have to know the number of people who got a zero or didn't take the test? So you probably just say for values of zero, how many there are. Now, what would be another way I could write this formula, leaving those blank and come out with the correct number? Who's good at math? 
What does average mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One of the three numbers, B, mm-hmm. 14, uh, mm-hmm. to B, 14, and divide by what? Three. There you go. Sorry. So, yeah, if you can do that. So, we have to scroll down. No, it's other one. Oh. Um, well, look at the other computer, the, the keyboard to your right, and look up. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's just other, other ones. Yeah. I know. You wonder why it drives me crazy. Um, mm-hmm. You don't like that. So, it's just how it is. There we, go. we have muted you, Tom Farron. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> um, that's obviously how. Okay, uh, let's see what else we got. Um, you know, we, we've we've shown multiple times how if you have a, a formula there, all you got to do to copy it and paste it down. I can go right over the one that's there. You can sit down. Yeah, okay. just like that. Yeah, that's what I did last night. They had me do something else, other two, but like. It was, but I couldn't find the button, so I I just so I just went down. I just went copy and paste. There's yeah. I mean, so many different ways to do each thing. Control yeah, control copy, control V. Um, I uh, and you know this this formula I came up with, which just adds the three together. You know, if I go up here and paste it here, you can see the numbers stay the same. Nothing changes. So I mean. It, to, if you have a funky thing where you need the average to be accurate, but you need the count, because now I can replace this to just plain count, because I took out the the zeros. So now I'm just going to count the numbers there. Oh, sorry, I still have a zero right there. Delete that. Nothing changes. So, um, although I'd have to check to see if the average would change. Probably would. It would just work. And and that would be a good example. Well, do you want the average of the tests that were actually taken or the average of all the tests, regardless of whether they didn't take it or not? Because you're gonna, you know, so it's important to know what it is you're asking or what you're trying to uh, to do. All right, and then we were talking and we talked about this at the beginning, which is the absolute and the relative uh, formulas. So if I if I do this as equal B4, you can see it highlights the B4. Let me zoom in a little bit more again. So if I make if I make this right here equal B4. And hit return, there's my 91%. That's what they call a relative um, uh, reference because there is no there are no dollar signs in there. So if I copy this and I move it over one, I move it over one, then this is C4, D4, and E4. Yep. And um, I mean, I could have also done this. Copy, paste, but notice this pastes the values. I could also have, let me get rid of this for a second. I'm gonna copy these. Oh, sorry. No, I was done. Um, equals B4. Before there was C4, they used dynamite. Um, yeah, I know. And so, you know, I can just copy that over and paste it. I can also copy this, paste it down right below it, and I'll get those four numbers over there. I can also go to paste special, and I get to paste the values, which are the yeah, so you can either paste the values or you can paste the link. 
you know, depending on what it is you want to do. All right. Um, now, if we, so what I'm going to do is I'll show you something interesting. So we're going to do a, um, an add-on, and we're going to make this 10%. So everybody's going to get 10% added on to their score. So this will become the new test one, test two, test three. In other words, what do you call that? We're, we're uh, what do you call that when the teacher does that? Uh, bonus, yeah, bonus, ship curve, curve, grading on the curve. Well, yeah. the middle curve is a little different. No, I know, I, but you know, so you look at it and everybody's going to get a little boost. But that's what I, I meant. So if we did test one is going to be um, B4 plus um, Well, actually what we're going to do, sorry, I'm going to make this 110%. The math is easier. Whatever it was, it's going to become 110%. So this is going to equal B4 times F4. So if you were 100%, you're going to become 110%. If you're 50%, you're only going to move up to 55%. You're getting a 10% bonus. So it's different than points. And not. So 91% became 100.1%. This is where I might go like this and say, you know, I'm going to go back to home and I'm going to reduce it to. Fine, be that way. It'll let me do it on the individual, but not the problem. I don't think I have anything else in this column. So now, but what if I want to do the same thing? I can't control copy this and paste it here. We'll paste it there because I need to link it back to F, F4. Matter of fact, I can put this, control X, I'm going to put it up here. And so I'm going to do this as B4 times G1, but I don't ever want it to move, so I'm going to put a dollar sign before the G and a dollar sign before the 1. And now when I do a control copy, control B, control B, you know, that's right, because it's locked to that, and that's a, uh, um, you know, so you have a, 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 a flexible link, and you have a, a, a locked link. The dollar signs make a locked link. Um, All right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think you've got a general just. So we talked a little bit about the homework that's due today. We talked a little bit about the homework that's due on Thursday. Sounds like, and hey, it's not like you're going to have to wait for your little alert to come out, that classes tomorrow will be canceled. So you'll have plenty of time to sit in the dorms or at home and watch this. No, no plows, no mobiles. I wish I could have a on the campus. Out. Yep. I haven't even touched for it for two years now. I just haven't had the chance. My school, it's kind of my grandma because I live on a dirt road. Right down the road from me is my grandmother's in her barn. Oh. Yeah, barn gets buried. Somebody left one on our property in Vermont one time. It was a nice one, but they had they had uh, did something wrong with it. And, um, the tread wasn't broken, but it was beat up, and and who knows? It, I think it could have run out of gas for all I know. It was out in the middle of the woods, and it was on our ski, ski trail because we're part of the. Um, um, it's not the Adirondack, but it, it, I forget what the name of it is. There's a, there's a cross-country ski trail that goes all the way through the lot. It goes across our property. And so one of the skiers said, you know, you've got to, 
snowmobile stuck up there and we went out with the tractor in the spring and <laughs> hauled it out, notified the state and they said, well, yours, <laughs> pretty much. And uh, I brought it home, I looked at it, couldn't quite figure out what to do with it. I brought it over to UTC and donated it there. So I'm sure they should have thrilled. Yep. So they played with it, hopefully, and sold it or did something with it. I don't know. They have too many snowmobiles over there. <laughs> no, they got like stack on stack on stack on stack. Well, yeah, it's good small engine repair skill. I know. It's easy, easy to learn on. Simple. I mean, you should have at least a V8 in those. <laughs> <laughs> they do do that. And yep. They are insane. My uh, uh, first car that I bought that wasn't a hand me down. Uh, was a dynamic 88 1966. Yeah, Oldsmobile. Yeah. They didn't make the, the the Delta 88 they made. Yeah, I was going to say the Delta was later. Yeah, the dynamic 88 had a 425 in it with a two barrel. Yeah, they made like 110 more maybe. I, I don't know. Well, you could, well, the funny thing was, I was living in Boston, and if you were trying to get on the highway, you had to time it more than Count to one, one one thousand, and then boom, it would take off. Because without a four barrel carburetor, it did not have, you know, you had to flood the engine with gas before it would kick on. Are there any questions from the peanut gallery online? No. No. I'm here. <laughs> Now we know you were you were gone. You were out doing stuff. You just make sure you were back for that one. I'm here. I understand. No, no, no. I was here the whole time. That's what they all say. Okay, so um, that's it. Uh, we'll be back online on Thursday at one o'clock. I'll be back. And work on your homework. Remember, there's only uh, till March 5th. That's all, when this class ends. So don't leave your homework till March 6th. No, it does not work. We'll see you later. You can make it work. Um, can, can you open up chapter three again? Because uh, uh, I took a look to see if your hand's still open. It's gone. So, yeah, plus some of that stuff, I could, plus some of that stuff, I had a hard time doing it. It's like, Office 365 just didn't have some of the stuff, like, some of the stuff they're saying you should go to. I literally had, like, type in the health card. We'll see. Hold on. And if you need me to open something, don't leave yet. I was just going to tell you, mine's already... I posted it last night, so that's all done.